Hey, up oh, right. I'm making this uh, video on the back of the video that I made about the uh, motorcycle dealerships closing down about two weeks ago. Since then, uh, I've had reports of other motorcycle dealerships closing down. So you know, it, it seems to be an ongoing situation. But it has um, shown some interesting figures on sort of category sales. That is, uh, you know, larger and smaller capacity motorcycles, which is interesting. And it does provide some validation to um, predictions that I've been making over the last two or three years about smaller capacity motorcycles. Now, last week, uh, the MCIA, that's the Motorcycle Industry Association here in the UK, published a report around the first nine months of motorcycle category sales for 2024 here in the UK. And I have to say, although I, I don't think it's the end of the world, it does make for quite grim reading. Now, just last week, Pidcock Motorcycles of Nottingham, interestingly, um, it's Pidcocks that I got my Triumph T120 from sort of eight years ago, uh, have gone into administration. That is, their uh, Triumph showrooms, their Ducati showrooms, have both gone into administration. I think they may have someone on the line to save the BMW showroom, but there's no news on that uh, as yet. It's uh, a, a situation that's ongoing. Also, the KTM parent group, uh, Perrier Mobility AG, are reported to be in financial difficulty. Now, uh, I might be wrong, but I thought that was a joint venture with Bajaj Motorcycles of India. Um, not quite sure what the situation is, I've got to admit. But, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see whether they can dig themselves out of the hole that they're in. If not, I'm sure Bajaj can probably buy them out and KTM will continue. I've got to admit, KTM isn't a brand that I've ever really been interested in, but I will try to keep you updated if I hear anything new uh, on this particular subject. Now, just to recap, if you're watching this video in isolation, uh, of course, we had the COVID pandemic uh, a few years back, which at the times it did seem to boost motorcycle sales. I think everybody was uh, sort of cash rich at the time. Everybody was at home. They weren't spending any money. People were ordering bikes online. And if I remember rightly, 2020 was a pretty good year. And motorcycle sales have sort of experienced a bit of a revival uh, since then but of course the um, amount of ridiculous amount of money that was spent on the covid pandemic uh, along with rising energy costs over the last couple of years have pushed the uk and a lot of other countries for that matter it's not just the uk into a cost of living crisis money is tight the cost of everything has skyrocketed uh, you know our energy bills at home uh, the cost of groceries have gone up by about a third. And as I've been expressing my opinions over the last two or three years, the previous Conservative government didn't really handle the situation very well. And then, to make matters worse, the new incoming Labour government have been uh, equally inept in the way that they've handled the economy. Uh, we've had the budget, which is day after tomorrow, or if you're watching this video, it'll be tomorrow, looming over our heads with all sorts of uh, different new or raised taxes uh, on the horizon. No one really knows what's going on. With projections of fuel duty going up by a possible seven pence, um, paper mile coming in uh, in place of road tax you know the, the, the whole thing is just a mess at the moment and consumer confidence is extremely low so people are tending not to make big purchases um you know in lieu of what they think may or may not happen over the next few weeks and of course it's not just consumer confidence that's been hit business confidence and investment has as well and then on top of that uh, despite the fact that we've constantly been promised global warming uh, it doesn't appear to have happened this year it's taken a year off we've had a pretty wet cold motorcycle season and i know a lot of people tell me there is no such thing as a motorcycle season but there is the way the industry works is you know the the bulk of their sales are made through the warmer drier months when people are confident 
to go out and buy uh, a new motorcycle. I mean, nobody wants to buy a brand new motorcycle, ride it home in the rain, and then spend the next two or three weeks riding it in the rain. You know, it, it just doesn't work like that. So when the weather's bad, people tend not to go into the dealerships and buy motorcycles. So the result is, and I'll give you uh, the figures in a moment, um, if they haven't made the money by August, September time, most dealerships know that winter is going to be dire anyway. It always is. And that's the time when they start making decisions about the way ahead. Now, the other thing that keeps coming into the conversation is the cost of insurance. And the MCIA actually quoted this as being, uh, you know, one of the factors involved. I know last year, my motor insurance for my bikes and my car went up by a, a good 25%. It was one hell of a hike. Strangely, this year on renewal, it's gone back to year before last prices. So I'm not quite sure if that's just something specific to me that's brought them down or whether people are finding that across the board. I'd be interested to hear from you if you've experienced the same. Now, the motorcycle industry here in the UK has always been uh, quite a fragile one. Um, and as I've just previously said, this is the time of the year where um, you know accountants start to look at the books and decide whether decisions have to be made about closing down or whether they're okay to continue. And now, this all comes into uh, the other issue from the other video that we uh, talked about a couple of weeks ago, and that's people finding that uh, dealerships are refusing to take the bikes in in part exchange. The thing is... You know, if new bikes aren't selling, they don't want to take new old stock in in part exchange because it's the no, at this time of the year, it's just going to be sitting on the showroom floor for months before they've got any likelihood of selling it. Now, uh, that particular video was specific to BSA, but since then, on the back of that video, I've had people telling me that dealerships are refusing to take Royal Enfields in, Triumphs in, BMWs in, Ducatis, there's even been one or two complaints that people have struggled to uh, part exchange some of the more common Japanese bikes. So it's not just BSA that is affected by this. It, you know, it's, it's all part of the very same situation. They don't want cash sitting in bikes on the showroom floor when times are hard. I've even heard uh, from, you know, comments in the comments section that one or two uh, dealerships have sort of closed half the showroom up and reduced the size of the stock. Uh, it's to be expected in a situation like this. Now, just to answer one or two questions that cropped up about um, dealerships that have gone into administration or liquidation, uh, people have been commenting that, well, you know, the car have done because they're still advertising motorcycles. Obviously, they're in a situation where they do have to liquidate stock. You know, they can't just sort of lock the doors up and leave all the motorcycles locked in the showroom and walk away. They've got to get rid of them. So, yes, you are going to see adverts from uh, motorcycle dealerships that have reportedly closed down or gone into administration. Going into administration doesn't necessarily mean that the dealership has closed it just means that, uh, you know, they're in under administration. So the dealership may well continue to operate under a limited capacity until they've liquidated stock. But one thing is for sure, they're looking to get rid of stock, not take new second-hand stock in. So your chances of a pie exchange, no matter what you own, are very, very slim. Now, the silver lining, of course, for motorcyclists, if you're in a position to buy a new bike, or even a used bike for that matter, uh, without having to PX your old bike in, i.e. just a straight sale, there are some amazing discounts to be had at the moment. Now, it's definitely the time to buy if you're in a position to buy. But if you've got a bike that you need to get rid of in order to do that, I would suggest you hang on and wait and see what happens next uh, next summer, next motorcycle season, because, 
you know, now is not a good time to try and pat exchange or even sell a bike privately. We're in a buyer's market at the moment. It's a good time to buy, but it's certainly not a good time to be selling under any circumstances. Now, what I did find a little bit startling is that according to the MCIA, sales are only down 3.8 percent compared to last year it's only taken a 3.8 percent decrease in sales to put a lot of companies under pressure but actually when you sort of delve into uh, the different motorcycle categories it all becomes a little bit uh, clearer as to what's happening now large capacity motorcycles that's motorcycles bigger than 1000 cc's their sales have dropped by 10.6% this year compared to 2023. Now, motorcycles in the range of 751 to 1,000 cc's have fallen by 8.7%. But what has kept um, the decrease in sales artificially low, if that makes sense, is the 125 to 500 cc's category, which shows a year-to-date growth of 20.4%. So people have stopped buying big bikes and instead they've been buying smaller capacity bikes, sub 500cc bikes, which sort of ratifies what I said the other week about BSA 650 sales being down this year. It's not just the BSAs, it's all sort of above 500cc categories that have been affected irrespective of the manufacturer. Now, the big problem is, of course, your large capacity motorcycles, 1,000 cc's plus, are your big ticket items. These are your sort of 15 to 20,000 plus motorcycle sales. So a 10% or just over 10% drop in sales is big. You know, it's quite serious for a motorcycle dealership that specifies in, you know, larger capacity motorcycles uh, companies like, you know, well, maybe not so much Triumph these days, but they did used to be in that category. And, of course, BMW, Ducati, etc., that just specialise in the larger bikes. Your 751 to 1000 cc category, again, you know, you're looking at the 10,000 to 15,000 pound category. So, again, an unsustainable loss for a lot of dealerships. Now, it is good news that smaller motorcycles uh, are you know more popular in the the the, the sales have risen by 20 percent this year but what you've got to remember is across the board irrespective of engine size your profit margins are about the same so you may have to sell uh sort of four 500 cc motorcycles in order to uh, meet the profit that you would get from a a, a twenty thousand pound plus motorcycle uh, overheads for all your dealerships, give or take, are going to be very similar. So, you know, that increase in sales hasn't been enough to save some motorcycle dealerships that perhaps, you know, haven't sort of grabbed those extra sales that have been available. They've been grappling with higher overheads as well, and obviously that increase in, in sales for some dealerships just hasn't been enough to keep them afloat. But this does show a change in trends, whether it's going to be permanent or not, uh, you know, we don't know. We're going to have to wait and see what next year and the year after uh, sort of reveals to us. But it does look for the moment as the large capacity motorcycles are on the decline, as I've been predicting for some time. And smaller capacity motorcycles are on the up and will possibly become the dominant sales in the future. At the end of the day, when money is tight, they just make a lot more sense. The outlay is lower, they're a lot more practical, they use a lot less fuel, you know, they just make so much more sense than an oversized, expensive beast. So it'll be interesting to see yeah, what transpires going forward from here. Once again, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and my other videos, and in doing so, helping to support this channel. I really do appreciate it. I would also appreciate it if you would consider leaving a like to this video and subscribing to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. I will, of course, be back this Friday. So until then, please ride safely, and I'll see you soon.